Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildred, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. Some of you may recall that a few years ago, I covered Marvel Heroic Roleplaying, the excellent, if short-lived, Marvel RPG from Margaret Weiss Productions. At the time, I briefly touched on the foundation of Marvel RPG, a pair of games from TSR, but also the controversial entry from Marvel themselves, or at least Marvel being the ones at the forefront of it. This one has been a bit of a curiosity in the back of my mind. I remember it not being received well, but I was never sure if that was due to the game itself or due to outside factors. It was following up on the TSR game, after all. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the time this came out, namely the early 2000s, an era that was smack dab in the legal slap fight Marvel was involved with itself. Now, it's physically impossible for me to summarize that affair here, so if anyone's curious, I'd recommend looking at SF Debreeze's video series, The Rise and Fall of the Comic Empire. I bring it up because of two things that this entry tried to do in this instance of Marvel trying to publish an RPG themselves. First, trying to integrate the Marvel Power Grid series of official stat blocks into a game. This was something I recall getting pushed pretty hard. I seem to recall it being in the Overpower card game way back in the day. The second was using a diceless system. Now I will admit, when it comes to diceless systems, I have a mixed attitude about them. For the purpose of brevity here, I'll say that diceless games don't exactly play to my strength. It's like trying to sew wearing boxing gloves. I might explain this in Amusing later. So with all that said, it's time to ask the million dollar question. Is Marvel Universe really that bad? Well, let's find out. At 130 pages, the overall look isn't too terrible, all things considered. The text seems to be a bit thin on its font, and that could strain with the light blue cage color, but that might be a consequence of the scan quality I have. Best I could find, sorry about that. One thing the game does do that I have an issue with is going out of its way to talk about how different it is. This is a fairly common mistake. The thing is, people don't care about how different it is. And being unique isn't a free pass. Also, no index. A non-traditional game not having an index is, quite frankly, a shameful display. Much like the mechanics we'll get into later, character creation relies on stones, namely red and white ones. A white stone can be split into three red stones. A starting character has 40 white stones, effectively, to spend on abilities, actions, and modifiers. We'll be doing that with our sample hero, 12. First, abilities. The five abilities, intelligence, strength, agility, speed, and durability, can grant bonus stones to actions that use them, and can be applied to defense. Checking the universal cost list, we'll have each ability at three, spending five stones. Secondly, actions. Actions are a collection of skills, powers, and tricks. Naturally, the bulk of the stones we spent here and have varied costs, and can be further modified by advantages and disadvantages. We'll be spending four stones in acrobatics, five stones on close combat, with a two on a double damage advantage, four stones on concentration, six in general knowledge, and two stones in wall climbing. Modifiers work similarly, but cannot be changed as easily as actions. We'll spend six stones on reflexive dodge, three in enhanced vision, and five stones on wealth. As a result of this spread, 12 starts with three health stones and nine energy stones. A little bit on the nose if you ask me, but that's the way it lay. Character creation is a bit tricky due to the use of red and white stones, and what doesn't help matters is how the various things you can spend them on aren't exactly organized between actions and powers. The use of a universal cost table also adds an issue by making it where you have to keep checking back and forth with all the different costs at play. Furthermore, while it's nice to provide sample characters, they'd be better served by putting in a set of example power set spreads to give people an easier time diving in. Of course, it's entirely possible that I'm just spoiled by mutants and masterminds, which did that quite frequently. Marvel Universe's action resolution system revolves around red energy stones and white health stones. Red stones are expended as both energy and defense, where you can spend from your energy pool, starting at 9 per earlier character. You may spend energy stones on a task based on the action used and the associated ability. The rating of both determines how many stones you can spend in this pool, as well as how many you can put into defense. For the purposes of example, let's use 12's acrobatics action. Since he has a 4 in acrobatics and a 3 in agility, he can spend up to 8 red stones. However, he's to decide how many of those get put into defense, if any. This is determined by the ability used. In this case, 12 can move up to 3 red stones to defense. 
These stones are spent, but can be regained per turn at a rate equal to the number of health stones used, in this case, three. The determining factor, if you succeed, depends on how many stones you spent. In combat, you deal more damage, where in a non-combat encounter, it determines how quickly you can pull the action off. Obviously, damage is equal to the difference between the two stone totals. The damage is resolved by reducing the white stones with defense, adding to the number to beat. The idea that the game revolves around managing resources is a fine start, but that's also part of the problem. The fact that almost everything in the mechanics depends on managing these stones and being based only on a few ability scores makes the use of energy stones far too stingy for my life. Moreover, it leads to a lack of tactical options and encounters, since no matter what action you take, you're still essentially playing a bidding war. The fact that health can be so low doesn't help matters, being a very action-based game. I understand the appeal of wanting to make a simpler system, but I think they made it a little too simple in the process. It's at the point where you always end up taking the same tactic, no matter how much you dress it up. Sadly, lipstick on a pig is still a pig. Despite how I might come off sometimes, I don't hate either diceless games or narrativist games. However, I'm not giving them a pass for being different either. Marvel Universe puts the biggest flaws of this type of play under a microscope. When people like the nature of building, they like making short and long-term decisions in play. And when those potential decisions are limited in feel, it makes the narrative feel the same. To be quite honest, I think the ARS system is in the wrong game. Given how it handles the health-energy dynamic, perhaps it would be better served in a game with a higher degree of lethality. That, and the typical balancing problems in superhero RPGs, are just as present here. All that said, is Marvel Universe really that bad? In my not-so-humble opinion, yes. It's not devoid of merit, mind you, but the game clearly needed a means to make your stat decisions matter. I don't think the power grid is at fault here. The problem is how they handle the stone mechanic. It's too restrictive and lacking in mechanical variety, no matter how much they dress it. While it's a curious piece of history for both role-playing games and for Marvel, the only stamp I can legitimately give this game is Avoid. It might be worth a read if you've got a historian bent like myself, but in terms of rules like superhero RPGs, there are far better options than this one. If there's a moral to this story, it's one that I've said many times over the years. You have to understand the rules before you can try and break them. As many problems as the traditional dice-based game can have, going the other way isn't automatically good. In fact, most of the time it's anything but.